Coming up, we're going to speak with David Nelson. He's the chief strategist at Bell Point Asset Management. He says CEO pay in corporate America is capsizing worker compensation. He's telling shareholders now is the time to speak up or, quote, this charade will continue. But first, it's all about Canada. Is there a charade taking place in this country? Here's a look. Global CEO to worker pay ratios. CEO salaries in corporate America are more than 350 times greater than regular workers and 206 times greater in Canada is based on 2013 data and that's a lot higher than the rest of the world. Our highest paid CEO made $88 million in 2013. That's Jerry Schwartz of Onyx Corp. We're putting the rich list under the microscope microscope revealing the big trends and issues in the CEO pay debate for that discussion. We're now joined by Richard LeBlanc. He's an associate professor, law, governance and ethics at York University and Anand Parsan, Toronto practice leader, executive compensation at the Hay Group. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Is this need to attract people uh, and you've got to pay them to bring them here? But you're focused on this issue of peer benchmarking. Uh, and that is, you know, if that guy's making that much, this guy has to make as much or more. That's right. And that, that has exacerbated executive pay because what happens when legislators turn on pay is they've essentially said we're going to disclose everybody's pay. And that brings rivalry, it, being, it brings uh, competition. It's not as much a greed issue, it's a rivalry issue. Um, and there's academic research that 17% of CEO pay compounded annually has more to do with this concept of pay benchmarking, which is we want to pay our CEO at the 75th and 90th percentile. And we compare that to, to uh, a peer basket of, of companies that are larger and more complex. So that has, that has driven CEO pay up. In the last uh, four, five, six years since the recession, for example, it, we've seen double-digit increases in some countries, especially the, the UK. And then we see a wealth disparity between uh, CEO pay and workers. So legislators have come in now and said, well, we, we now want to see ratios, the ratio of the CEO to the worker. We are predicting that some ratios could go as high as 500. Some comp consultants are predicting 1,000. And this inequity... Um, uh, introduces uh, uh, systemic difficulties because you don't have a growing mi middle class. The average worker pay has been one or two percent, but CEO pay has has skyrocketed because of this structural benchmarking issue. Uh, on this benchmarking issue, is the environment for CEOs that competitive? Well, it's a bit of a myth that that it, it's called so-called the talent myth that CEOs will leave and it's that competitive. You're really, if you're a CEO, you're really dealing with three people. You're dealing with three or four people on the comp committee, so it's not really as much of a free market as people think. And if you're clever as a CEO, you can influence the selection of committee members. You could threaten to leave. Um, uh, so, so CEO pay, there's a number of reasons that it's, it's gone up, but the academic research is, is, is very critical. Regulators have never gotten this right, uh, including after the financial recession. So we still see the public outcry from stakeholders. We still see CEO pay going up and up and up, and particularly when there's no alignment with performance. So it's, it's come onto the microscope in the last couple of years, and we're expecting from Congress uh, this year uh, further regulation on pay. Re legislators are quite concerned. But that, uh, that approval rating for some of these numbers, I mean, uh, is it our own fault as shareholders that we are willing to accept these numbers? I mean, should we turn the conversation around a little bit? Yeah, I don't. I think what Anand is saying, if I can characterize, is that we have had overwhelming approval of say on pay. And he's absolutely correct. That doesn't, however, mean that there's, a dis that there's not a disconnect between pay and performance. And that doesn't mean that there's not a pay problem. So increasingly, uh, directors associations and investors, uh, and now regulators are looking at not that that are looking at longer term metrics and a greater link between pay and performance. Shareholders have been very generous in say on pay, but that doesn't mean that there's not a problem. Uh, and just on because it's uh, CEOs is kind of where some of the focus has been, Richard. But we're also talking about board payments. And one of the interesting discussions I saw is that in private companies, board members, the chair. They receive compensation for those positions, but they're also paid to attend the meetings. I mean, is that also a, a bit of a disconnect? Yeah, you're not. What happens with uh, the publicly traded companies is you get 
shares awarded to you and you get uh, cash, and typically it's 50-50, you can make two to 300,000, some directors make more, sitting on a public company board. And the investors are now looking at this and they're saying, well, how can they be independent if they're going to seven or eight meetings a year, they're making two, 300,000, are they, are they actually incented to award CEO pay and not offend the CEO? So you can overpay, here's the point, you can overpay independent directors. For, for, for what they do. Uh, and also they get paid regardless. They get paid, the, 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 the shares that they're awarded come regardless of company performance. So activists are looking at this and saying, you know, we really don't do this in, 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 in private companies. We pay according, we pay directors according to performance of the company. Um, so we're, we're seeing greater scrutiny of independent director pay as well as executive pay because the two are related because the people on the comp committee are supposedly the independent directors, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just taking them at face value, over some period of time, these people are making considerable amounts of capital. There's a lot of questions. Uh, should we look at the absolute number? I mean, how do we put a value on one head with these numbers over a five-year period or over a one-year pe period? Yeah, I think you need to look at the quantum, the actual absolute number. And also, I think what Anand is saying is pay has become very complex. And I uh, have talked to, uh, I regularly interview comp committee members, and they don't understand, and they actually approve the pay because we have intended pay, realized pay, realizable pay. It's very difficult difficult to compare apples to oranges and ask a very simple question. How much did the CEO get paid in this year for his performance? Um, so we, there's a movement now to simplify pay. It's become very complex. You need comp consultants. Uh, it's very difficult to understand. And that's where the potential for self-interest comes in when you have that type of complexity, where you have investors asked to approve things that they don't understand fundamentally and comp committees that don't understand. What, what, what is the long-term implication? So there's a movement to simplification of pay. I, I uh, grew up in this industry on, the, you know, kind of the corporate side. So I bought in. Like in the 1990s, I bought in. Hook, line, and sinker. Comp the uh, the CEO is going to be compensated for performance. I'm going to win. He's going to win. Everybody's going to win. I, I don't get a sense that there are lots of uh, performance metrics for these guys. But I just wonder now, again, to the complexity, am I getting maybe as a short shareholder? Uh, what I am have been promised to get from these high-paid CEOs are the metrics that the, we're the, using the, right. The metrics are, are wrong, and that's where regulators are going to come in in the next year or two. The metrics, for the most part, are, sh are short-term, financial, quantitative, and that rewards executives for shaking the fence, for, for taking extreme actions that might take risk to the company, and not thinking about the long term, which is innovation, health, robustness, non-financial metrics, employee engagement, customer satisfaction. So we, we, I predict, and regulators are already starting down this road, is to adjust the very metrics that, that are used to reward CEO compensation. That's on the horizon. And what about employees and I'm because um, these pay packets for directors, senior executives, not just the CEO, but all executives have been going up. Pay packets for the workers have not, even middle management have not. So there's this discussion out there, we gotta stay competitive. We've got to, you know, we gotta keep your wages down because we want to, you know, it's a global environment. But you know, the guy in the corner office is getting a, a, a decent hike. Even even pay for failure. Look at what happened with Target, for example. Well, it, yeah. oh, there's a there's a case in point. Pay for not to prompt yes. my colleague. <laughs> but, but even but even BlackBerry before John That's Chen. Right. I mean, there was a big pay packet there, yeah. and the stock went straight down. Pay for failure. I don't think Target's the only one, but uh, if, in case our viewers aren't aware of what happened at Target. Yeah, the CEO uh, uh, and the executive management got a huge bonus. They pulled out the, out of company, out of Canada. They fired 18,000 workers. They actually awarded themselves at the, the in the U.S. executives the day before the announcement came out, which is a legal uh, a legal thing to do. And they and they benefited because after the Target closure in Canada came out, the the stock price uh, went up. So we have these ex outrageous examples of pay for failure, of, of inequities with uh, employees, with senior management. So there's a greater scrutiny now on pay um, than ever before. And it's not as much from executives and shareholders and comp consultants. It's more from regulators and employees. And, 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 regular, and regulators have really been focused so far on disclosure. Yes, exactly. Uh, and not yes. fixing the problem, if it, you, that's if you right. want to call it a they problem. They have to fix the problem. Just, mm -hmm. just turning the light on and saying more disclosure, it actually makes the problem worse. Oh. It actually exacerbates the problem. Richard LeBlanc from York University, Anand Parson from The Hay Group, thanks very much.